Distributed leadership, what makes it so special? We deal with leadership on a daily basis, whether it is in the role of leader or in the role of follower. That's why it's worth discussing the topic in more detail. The theory goes as follows. Broadly speaking, we have two visions. On the one hand, we have positional leadership. And on the other hand, we talk about distributed leadership. Of course, there are many other phrases in use, but these can be appropriately placed um, in one of these two main categories. Let us start with the more conventional view, positional leadership. In this vision, there's one leader, a heroic figure who ensures direction, stability and security for the followers. Exerting leadership occurs by means of a formal position, that of a CEO, a manager or a team leader. This process is accompanied by a clear hierarchy that ensures that the leader can steer, control, check, monitor and, where necessary, even punish. The work is regulated and the formal position offers a clear legitimacy for leadership. The leader represents the authority and makes final decisions. The employees follow and are subordinate. Distributed leadership, however, offers a more flexible model. Not only the former leader exerts influence, in principle everyone does. Not everyone is a leader at the same time. Members exert influence when they have a specific expertise or experience that's required for a specific task or problem in a given situation. This can only happen when the members have a clear understanding of each other's skills and capabilities and ambitious. Consequently, someone can claim leadership and colleagues then also grant each other this role and accept this person's guidance. This flexible model does require members to be able to both lead and follow and that they support each other in their work. Everyone is expected to take the initiative and take on leadership. As experience and expertise are such critical ingredients of distributed leadership, all members need to keep developing themselves and continue to make an effort to learn. It looks like it will take a while before our organizations have completed their work. In the meanwhile, we can delve a bit deeper in the theory of leadership. Now that you have seen our two organizations uh, at work, it is a good idea to have a closer look at their professional space. Professional space is the space that every employee has and every professional needs to exert influence on the workflows and the setups. Both leadership visions offer approximately the same amount of professional space. But it becomes interesting to see when we take a look at who is responsible for that professional space. Is it the former leader who knows best what is needed and what needs to happen? Or is it the professional themselves? In any case, let us take a look what our builders have been up to now. Wow, such beautiful creations. Let us take a look at the results. We see the green positional team worked a bit more efficiently. They did indeed have a very well-trained leader. But if we look at the blue distributed team, then we see that they have paid more attention to an innovative execution. They used their expertise optimally and worked on new solutions. As they could exert more influence on the execution of a project, 
they have also gained more experience. They will be able to use this experience and their newly acquired skills again in future projects. In the successful positional model, it's the manager who will most significantly improve. Here, you will already notice a subtle distinction between, on the one hand, the performance paradigm and the development paradigm. Both are definitely worthwhile, but their foci are different. In the last couple of years, we are beginning to see that there are more uh, organizations leaving classical hierarchies and are developing on the basis of networks and flexible connections. The leader as a heroic figure will without doubt remain, especially when they act as a transformational leader. A transformational leader is a positional leader with an inspiring vision who stimulates with substance and shows personal consideration to each employee. Mm. We see that modern organizations need to become increasingly smart to substantiate sustainable development. This does not only apply to their managers, but to all employees. That is why the ability to continually learn and develop in and around the day-to-day -day work environment becomes a crucial requirement for success. In that light, it's interesting and exciting to see how leadership develops itself from positional to distributed. And in that learning process, the distinctions between the performance and development paradigms appear to be slowly blurring. Now then, what is so special about distributed leadership? In any case, it offers the professional space for everyone to learn and to develop. However, as an employee, you do have to take initiative and have the courage uh, to exert leadership. Your specific set of capabilities is probably the most important vehicle for doing so. It has been very pleasant to have had you here. Now, I will continue my experiments and hopefully we will meet next time.